Today we're going to be talking about your chapter 12 notes on page 5. And today we're going to talk about some more formulas that you do not have to memorize. Today I'm only going to be talking about the functions of the double angle. And I'm going to be saving the functions of the half angle for tomorrow's video. And I'll just mention that you have a quiz on Thursday. And this functions of the half angle I am not going to include on the quiz on Thursday. These half angles. But this will be on quiz. So all of the functions that we've covered in the other pages, including the double angle, will be Thursday's quiz. <clears throat> What's nice about the function of the double angle formulas is that you're only going to have one angle that you have to deal with, angle A or X or whatever they want to call it. In the other formulas that we had to use, in these formulas, you always had an A and a B both, and you had to set up two separate right triangles and find four trig functions. In the double angle formulas, what we're going to do is only have one, one angle, and it's called A. So what we have is the sine of 2 times A. This is, this is why it's called a double angle formula, because we're doubling angle A. So we're going to take this angle A that's been doubled, and we're going to expand it out into this single A. If you notice that there's a 2A here, but there's not a 2A here, this is just 2 times the sine of A times the cosine of A. When you look at the cosine of 2A, a lot of times I will put parentheses around these 2As, you have a choice of 3. And you can choose any one of these 3 you want. Sometimes it's more convenient to choose one over, over the other, but it doesn't matter which one you choose. They're all going to give you the same answer in the end. So depending on the information that's given to you in the problem, like I said, it might make more sense to choose one or the other. But I'll just say you can use any of these you want because they'll all give you the same answer. And then here's the tangent of the double angle formula. So here's a couple steps. Um, just find the right formula to use up here and then substitute in just like we've been doing in the other formulas. And sometimes you're going to have to draw a tri right triangle to figure out a missing value. So let's just jump into an example. And these examples are very similar to the ones that we've been doing in class and on the other videos. We have an angle A. And angle A is in measure of an angle in quadrant 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw angle A in quadrant 2. It's a good idea to label this with an A, even though we only have one angle. We don't have an A and a B this time. Here's angle A down in the corner, and the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And hopefully you know by now this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So this side over here is negative 5 because it's going backwards on the x-axis. <clears throat> so we want to find out what is the sine of 2a, what is the cosine of 2a, what is the tangent of 2a, and we're not going to do the co cosine of a half angle today because I'm not going to talk about half angle formulas. So we go up to the sine of 2a, and we expand this out, the sine of 2a, is equal to 2 times the sine of A times the cosine of A. Well, we're already told that the sine of A is 12 over 13, so we don't have to write that again. But we should write down that the cosine of A is equal to negative 5 thirteenths. So what we have is 2 times 12 thirteenths times negative 5 thirteenths. And if you want to put this in your calculator, it's probably the fastest thing. 2 times 12 thirteenths times negative 5 thirteenths. And I'm just going to math frac this. And we get negative 120 over 169. So there's our first answer. The second one is the cosine of 2a. Like I said, you can choose any of these you want. 
Well, let's just choose the first one just for the heck of it. We'll just say this is equal to the cosine squared of A minus the sine squared of A. We'll just choose that first one. It really doesn't matter which one we choose. Well, what does the cosine squared of A mean? It means we're taking the cosine of A, which is negative 5 thirteenths, and we're going to square it. That's what this squared means. It means take the cosine and square it. Well, the sine of A is 12 thirteenths, and we're going to square that, and then we'll have our answer. So let's put that in our calculator, negative 5 thirteenths, square that, and we're going to subtract from that 12 thirteenths parentheses, and then we'll square that. If you want to use your fraction button on your calculator, you can do that too. But I'm just going to press math, frac right here, and we'll get the answer of negative 119 over 169. Hopefully you're following along on your calculator so you can um, get used to pushing these, these right buttons. Now the tangent of 2a, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can call this the sine of 2a divided by the cosine of 2a if you want to. That's probably the fastest thing because we already know that the sine of 2a is equal to negative 120 over 169. And the cosine of 2a is equal to negative 119 over 169. And since we have a complex fraction, all we have to do is multiply the top and bottom by the denominator, which is 169. And we, when we multiply these, the 169s will cancel, and these 169s will cancel, and what we'll be left with is a negative over negative, which is positive, and 120 over 119. That's the fastest way if you already know the sine of 2a and the cosine of 2a. But let's say we didn't know either of those. So let's just use this tangent of 2a formula. So the tangent of 2a is 2 times the tangent of a over 1 minus tangent squared of a. Well we haven't written down up here what is the tangent of a. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, so we have negative 12 fifths for our tangent of A. So we have 2 times negative 12 fifths, 2 tangent of A, and then we're going to divide that by 1 minus tangent squared of A, which is negative 12 fifths squared, just substituting in the tangent of A into the formula. So now I'm going to take my calculator out, and this time I'm going to use the fraction button. You might want to do this too. So we have 2 times negative 12 fifths on the top, and on the bottom we have 1 minus negative 12 fifths squared. And then if we do a math frac on that one, we get 120 over 119, which is the same answer that we got before. And if they're not the same, then we did something wrong in either one of these two problems. So there are your double angle formulas in action. <clears throat> Let's just do a couple more examples. Now we have sine of x is 4 fifths. And if this is an acute angle, that is your clue Acute angle means this is a quadrant 1 angle, because acute is less than 90. So if we draw our little quadrant 1 angle here, and the sine is 4 fifths, hopefully you know this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the cosine of x is equal to 3 fifths. So the sine of 2x is 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x which is 2 times 4 fifths times 3 fifths. And I'm not going to use a calculator on this. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24 on the top. And on the bottom, 5 times 5 is 25. So there is your answer for part A. The cosine of 2x. Oh, let's, let's use a different formula. Whoops, hopefully you saw all of that. I don't know. Here's two 
I don't think you saw that, but here are your substitutions. Now the cosine of 2x. We can choose any of these three that we want. Let's choose something different this time. Let's choose the 2 cosine squared a minus 1. It really doesn't matter, but we'll just choose that anyways. 2 cosine squared x minus 1 because our, our angle is x. So that is 2 times, well the cosine of x is 3 fifths, so we're going to take 3 fifths and square it, that's what cosine squared means, and subtract 1 from that. So this is, I'm not going to use a calculator, 2 times 3 fifths squared is 9 20 fifths, and 2 times that is 18 20 fifths, and 1 is 25 20 fifths, and 18 minus 25 I believe is negative 7 20 fifths, which is our final answer on this one. And I'm going to skip the half angle. We'll do that one in tomorrow's video. <clears throat> right. Number three, they're giving us the sine of A being negative 0.8, or in other words, negative 8 tenths, if you want to write it as a fraction. What is the cosine of 2A? Well, like I said, we have a choice of 3. Well, I want to choose the one that has the sine of A in, so I don't have to figure anything out. So we'll say the choose the formula with sine A only, right, for this cosine 2A. So let's go look at our cosine of 2A formula. We have this one that's got both sine and cosine. This one's got only cosine. Let's choose this one down here because this one only has a sine in it. So it's 1 minus 2 sine squared of A. If we chose another one, we would just have to go through the process of finding the cosine of A. But we don't need to do that because we have been told what the sine of A is. The sine of A is negative point, 0 0.8. And we're going to square that multiply that by 2. So we'll just put it in our calculator exactly like this. 1 minus 2 negative 0 0.8 squared. So there's your double angle cosine formula and that is negative 0.28. And I'm going to leave it as a decimal because the problem gave me the original as a decimal, so I'm going to leave the final answer as a decimal also. <clears throat> All right, number four, we have a quadrant three angle. So a quadrant three angle down here, and this is called angle A, they say the cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, I'm not sure if I know this one. Let's see. Negative 8 squared plus b squared equals 17 squared, which is 64 plus b squared equals 17 squared is 289. And subtract out a 64 from that, and you get b squared equals 225. So b is equal to 15. <clears throat> but it's going down, so I'm going to call that a negative 15. Oh, actually, we didn't even have to go through all of that because in this one, they give us the cosine of A and they want the cosine of 2A. So I guess I did a little bit of wasted work here. The cosine of 2A, if you want to choose the right, a, a good formula, we can choose the one that only has the cosine in it. So we would choose 2 cosine squared A minus 1. <laughs> so I'll just put a note here. We're going to choose the formula with cosine of A. So like I said, I'm going to just double check, make sure I write it right. Two, this is equal to 2 cosine squared A minus 1. That's the double angle formula for cosine. So that's equal to 2 times negative 8 over 17 squared minus 1. So I'm going to put that in our calculator.
2 times negative 8 over 17 squared minus 1. And I think I'll math frac that because it was given to me as a fraction. Looks like it's negative 161 over 289. Is our final answer, negative 161 over 289. All right, now these, this next set are all half angle formulas, so I'm going to skip number five and we'll do that on tomorrow's video. Um, right here, we've got a two theta, sine of two theta, so we'll just expand this out to be two times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Well, if the cosine of theta is negative 0.6, let's turn this into a fraction, and you can do that on your calculator. Negative 0.6, do math frac, and that's negative 3 fifths. So if you're ever given a if you're ever given a decimal and you want to turn it into a fraction, like for trig, you can just math frac it. So that's negative 3 fifths. And we have a quadrant 2 angle, so we'll draw our angle in quadrant 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's our 3, 4, 5 triangle. And the sine of A or the sine of theta is 4 fifths positive. The cosine is negative 3 fifths. That's what we were given in our problem. I think I'll do this one by hand. 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24, and we have a negative because positive times positive times negative is negative, and 5 times 5 is 25. So there is our sign of the double angle formula. <clears throat> the cosine of 2 theta, you can choose any one you want. Let's just choose, we'll choose 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And they give us Cosine of theta is negative 0.6. If you want to call it negative 3 fifths, you can. It doesn't matter. Your calculator doesn't care. So let's do this. Um, 2 times negative 3 fifths squared minus 1. Negative 0.28. That looks familiar. Negative 7 over 25 would be your final answer. Although they gave it to us in a decimal, I guess it would be okay to give it back in the decimal. And then since we already know the tangent um, of, or we already know the sine of 2 theta and the cosine of 2 theta, we can, um, oh, let, let's figure out what 24 25 is a decimal. 24 over 25 is 0.96. So you have these two equivalent answers. That's a decimal and that's a fraction. We've got the fraction decimal. And so I'm just going to call tangent of 2 theta the sine of 2 theta divided by the cosine of 2 theta just because I already know those two values. So we have the sine of 2 theta is negative 0.96. The cosine of 2 theta is negative 0.28. And let's see what our calculator says that is. Negative 0.96 divided by negative 0.28. And I think I'll math frac that. 24 over 7. Positive 24 over 7. And then, let's see. This number 7 is a little bit tricky because what we have is a binomial squared. And remember when you have a binomial squared, you have to FOIL it. So we have to FOIL number 7. We're going to FOIL sine of x minus cosine of x times itself. So FOIL says sine of x times sine of x is equal to the sine squared of x. Sine of x times negative cosine of x is negative sine of x times the cosine of x. Negative cosine times positive sine is negative sine x cosine of x. 
and then L for last, negative cosine times negative cosine is positive cosine squared of x. So that one doesn't match any of the multiple choices yet. But what we have, and pay, pay real close attention here, what we have is we have a sine squared x plus a cosine squared of x. And those two together, sine squared plus cosine squared, it doesn't matter that they're not right next to each other. They can be next to each other, or they can be far away from each other, but they're still equal to 1 no matter what. So I'm going to take the cosine squared and the sine squared out of there and just call it 1. So now we have a negative sine x cosine x minus sine x cosine of x. Those two are exactly the same. They're like terms, and we have two of them. So it's minus 2 times a sine of x times a cosine of x. And that still doesn't match any of the multiple choices, but we're getting there. And the last thing we have is this. This is a double angle formula. Two sine of x times cosine of x is the same thing as sine of 2x from over here. It's the same thing except this has got a's in it and Ours has x's in it, so we're going to take this formula out and replace it with the sine of 2x. So what we're left with is this one just drops down, minus, and this is replaced with the sine of 2x. And there's our final answer, and you can see it matches up with letter D. So there's a lot of work involved in this problem. Don't forget that any time a binomial is squared, it, it requires you to FOIL this, F-O-I-L. And then the second big thing is sine squared plus cosine squared, no matter where they are in a polynomial, they can be added together and they're always equal to 1. That's one of those identities we learned last chapter. And then when you have two like terms, they can be combined, negative plus ne negative 1, negative 1 is negative 2, and then we have a double angle. Number 8 is a half angle um, problem, so we'll do that on tomorrow's video. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.